If you're able, would you please stand? Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia!
Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Please join in the reading of the psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, but I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, that you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, 
though some have died. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. By, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe the word of the Lord. This is the good news from the graveyard, according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Lent, of course, is past and traditions must live on. And so I have my chocolate cross, and it will be my first taste of chocolate since the, the day before Ash Wednesday. What is it? <laughs> wow. Easter has again taken a bite out of the cross of Christ. Lent is indeed over. These 40 dark days of preparation, of waiting, of penitence are over. What have we learned from Lent? What does Lent teach us? From the very beginning when that ashen cross is traced upon our foreheads until that day on Golgotha 
when the nails were pounded into the hands and feet of Jesus and he was raised up, raised up in the hot afternoon sun. And then where he saying it is finished, the scriptures say he bowed his head and breathed his last. What have we learned from all this? If we have learned anything, we have learned what life has taught us. That under no circumstance should we ever, ever deny or underestimate the power of death. It is a formidable foe. It is that which speaks of grief, of deep sorrow, of unspeakable loss. It speaks of hopelessness. It speaks of darkness. It speaks of fear. It speaks of life being taken away from us. And we should never underestimate its power. We've seen it here recently in this congregation. We have lost some people who are very dear to us and I know of others and even in my own life recently. People who have come to the end of life's journey. And the enemy had taken hold of them. And they were given over to that foe. We know the pain that it brings. We know the loss. And for us living, it is the loss of one relationship. But for those who are taken from us by death, by the powers of this world that do their worst, they have lost all their relationships. Oh yeah. Never ever deny the reality of or underestimate the power of death. Never lose sight of your mortality or mine. That is what Lent has reminded us of again. It reminds us of Places like Gaza and the Ukraine and the Sudan and even here in the cities and households of our own wonderful nation. It reminds us that death is a powerful foe and often grows out of the evil wills of people to bring it about to willfully be the agents and the allies of death because of the deepness of our sin, because of the wrongness of our revenge. And we continue to make the mistake of dealing with death by more death taking away the hopelessness that, the hopefulness that people have. Oh yeah, never underestimate the power of death. That's what Lent has taught us. But what has Easter taught us? What Easter teaches us is that we should never ever under any circumstance underestimate the power of God over death. The power of God greater than death. We should never deny or forget that he is the Lord of both death and life. You know, I, if Sandy can tell you this, if you talk to her, am a sucker for happy endings. 
I love happy endings. I can't stand a show that doesn't resolve itself in some kind of joy or happiness. It makes me crazy. I want to walk away from it. I want to check the TV off. But movies and TV shows that don't resolve themselves, well, they abound. But I am a sucker for a happy ending. I love It's a Wonderful Life. And all the genres like that. I love when conflict comes to resolution, when evil is overshadowed by good. Nothing is worse than a wonderful piece of music that doesn't resolve itself in its home tone, but hangs out there and never returns, never finishes, never comes to completion. Never has closure. Oh, I love a happy ending and a piece of music that resolves itself in that glorious home tone. I love Easter for that very reason. For God raised the Savior from the dead. I mean, to be sure, these women didn't go to the halls of government seeking Jesus. They didn't go to the throne in the temple seeking Jesus. They didn't go to some sunny and placid park seeking Jesus. By God, they went to a sepulcher. They went there to anoint the body of Jesus, the dead body, the one who breathed his last on the cross. The one whom it seemed evil than the powers of this world had overcome. They went. And when they got there, the stone was rolled away, the tomb was empty, and Jesus was raised. It doesn't get any better than that. This is God's magnus opus. And it resolves itself. Oh, the cross is still there. And it should be. Oh, the shadow of death hangs over us, and it always will. And the power of the evil foe is around us and within us, and we cannot deny it. But, but, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He triumphs. He is victorious. The battle has been won. O oh, death, where is thy victory? O oh, grave, where is thy sting? This is the joy even in the darkness of the world. So when you read the bad news, don't bow your head in sorrow so deep that you have no hope. But think back to the news that day in the graveyard outside of Jerusalem, not far from the cross. Let your hearts be filled with the good news that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let our lives be filled with hope, even when it seems hopeless. Joy, even in the midst of our sadness. Life even in the midst of our dying. Nothing, nothing fills the hole that death leaves behind than the good news that Christ is risen from the dead. And never, ever, under any circumstances, deny the reality of God's power or underestimate the possibilities of life and the promise of joy everlasting. My God, I love a happy ending. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Again, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're able, would you please stand and let the celebration continue as we sing together our next hymn. join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations. Free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones, <clears throat> roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. Especially we pray for all on our prayer list and those we name in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace as we're comfortable. may be seated.
thanksgiving for our offerings, let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world, through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of bread. Come and eat at God's table.
If you are receiving communion in the pew or in your homes, I invite you now to take um, the wafer, the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. And then again, the wine. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If any are in need of a gluten-free wafer, when you please come forward, let me know so that we can make sure that you receive it. There will be two stations today for communion, one on either side, and just um, receive the wafer and then go to the chalice bearer.
please stand? The body and blood of our risen Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. You have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Before our sending, I would uh, remind you that there is a breakfast downstairs waiting you. It is the reward of your getting up so early, you know. <laughs> and uh, we hope that you will take part in it and, and enjoy it. And uh, we wish you a blessed day. Easter season. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless us now and always. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.